Okay, so this is a the beginning of um, color pencil drawing using that photograph of the two birds sitting on the branch, right? As as one of the assignment examples of photography. So what I'm going to do is with this one continue a little bit with the rest of the bird to talk about a couple different techniques using colored pencil. The idea of using colored pencil for this is to create saturated color, which can sometimes be a challenge with colored pencil, as well as to create areas that kind of fade in and out, that aren't hard edge, that aren't, you know, sometimes conducive to things that are sharply pointed, right? Like the end of pastel. So let's talk about the methods with that. One, uh, one thing I'm going to do is to use a very, you know, ordinary set of colored pastels. These are not fancy. This is a student grade Prismacolor set. And there's only 24 colors. But I think we can kind of do, you know, do quite a bit with what we've got here. Um, and what I usually recommend is when you're using a colored pastel to start with the lightest or most, most saturated bright colors, right, intense colors, and then work your way towards darks. But you also want to be kind of thinking ahead because you need to reserve the white of the paper for the brightest of your highlights. One thing at Colored Pastels is that it will come with a white but there's really not much that this can do. <laughs> so when you use your, your white colored pencil on top of something, it, you know, the caveat is it can depend on the brand, right? More expensive colored pastels, the white actually does work a little better because there's more opaqueness to it. But if I were to use the white on top of my blue, for example, I'm not really gonna be able to do much to alter it, right? It's not gonna really lighten it. And it's certainly not going to get back to the white, the bright white that I really need for some places. Okay, so definitely leave the white of the paper for those brightest of highlights. So one thing that I did here in the body of the bird is that I started with this blue. It's not exactly the blue that I'm seeing in the photograph, but it's the lightest one. It's the most saturated kind of blue that I have in my set. So I definitely started with that. I'm gonna come down here to the tail. This is a section that I didn't quite get to. So the tail actually has a really, really dark beginning, but then it lightens up into a, a very bright blue. So. It might be that I'm using only this blue with a touch of my second blue on top of it to, to mix with mix with the rest. And the blue of the bird continues up through the body, a little bit more bright right along the underside of this section. And so I've got my brighter blue here, but then I'm gonna to switch to, let's see, this is not the one I'm looking for, that's kind of a purple. Here's my slightly deeper blue. So it gets a little bit darker right here in this middle section under the end of this feather. So I'm adding that darker blue keeping some of the lighter blue in place. And then it switches to a slightly deeper value up here in the body as well. So combining those two different blues is getting me fairly close to what I'm looking at here. The other thing I wanna be thinking about is the base color that I've used here, which is a combination of a couple of blues, is needing to be alternated with some texture and some slightly darker value. The blue starts to shift a little bit here. 
suggests the kind of feathery body. So I'm just kind of putting a couple of those notches in there. But then um, if I feel like I need to go even further with this value, you know, sometimes you really do need to pick up that black. So using a little bit of black, I'm going to push the value just a little bit further in a few places. as a, an added layer. And it does start to get a little bit darker here towards the neck. So suggesting a little bit of the feathery texture using my black ear. And maybe a little bit of that really dark value up under this little notch right here the tail feather. So this is a section of the bird. There's a little bit of the belly that's visible in the photo, which switches to an orange. I don't really have the perfect orange in my colored pencil set, but I think what I'm going to do is combine this orange with a little bit of yellow, right? So I'm picking up that orange right under the belly. And then it really kind of lightens up into a little bit more of a peach, so it gets pretty white right underneath that. But I want to make that just a little warmer, so I'm putting in a little bit of yellow to shift it towards kind of a really intense orange. I haven't done that yet here for the neck, so I'm going to brighten that orange with a little bit of yellow. Um, and then I'm going to look at the background. So this might be pretty straightforward in terms like, you know, how you use colored pencil in a sharply focused object. But let's look at how we do that in, or how we handle different sections like a blurry background with something that's very sharply pointed, like a colored pencil. So I've done that a little bit here, but let's switch over here to this side and then maybe I'll do a, a little bit underneath this branch, right? So the branch kind of comes under the belly right here. All right, so let's look at the background here and think about the colors that are, that are you know, gonna have to be layered one on top of another. One thing I wanna make sure to do is to keep that little bright white on the bottom of the belly because the light is coming from behind him. I managed to keep that little bit of light there on the back side, but I need to keep that also there in the front. So what I'm using is the lightest and brightest of what I detect in that background, which is kind of a light green. So I'm going to use my light green as my first light layer. And I'm going to continue it down here so that you can see it in a broader area that I haven't done anything yet on. So let's put a layer of that light green. And you notice that I'm moving, moving those parallel lines in different directions. And what that does is that it helps me kind of blend the strokes so that I don't have streakiness or at least too much streakiness. So I've got my first layer of green. This is not the color that I'm looking at in the photograph. So let's keep building on that color. This is a much darker green. So I'm going to put a layer of that on here. If I were to fill in this whole section with only one of these colors, for example, just this dark green, it would be much too dark and not really the mix of gray green that we really need. So switching the direction of my strokes. Let's come back up here to this little section 
under the bird's belly. Okay, so got a couple of greens on there, but I need to get it in a little more of a kind of a, a, a gray kind of neutral earth tone. So I'm gonna add a layer of brown to my green to make it a little more of an olive green. So it's a little more natural. Come back up to this section, put some of that in there too. So I just made that green a little, a cut down on the intensity and the saturation of the green, which is good. But I still need to gray it out a little more. I do have this really weird kind of light gray, but then I'm also going to add some, you know, some more to, to make it even more neutral. So this light gray doesn't do a whole lot. as I'm seeing here. <laughs> so let's switch to this dark dark brown and then a little black. All right, so it starts to get pretty gray and dark right under the branch. I'm gonna push that right up under the belly of the bird as well. Kind of pop that forward. And so now with what have I done here, Matt, maybe five, six, six colors, I'm getting really close to what I feel like I need in terms of the mix of different layers um, of, my, of my colored pencil. So definitely takes some persistence, right? But this is something that, you know, if you're, if you're kind of, you know, a little more oriented toward really focused kind of meditative processes in drawing. This kind of colored pencil work in layers and that kind of gradual buildup of color, looking at what you've got, comparing it to your photograph, it can be really satisfying to do. So don't be discouraged by, oh my gosh, it looks like it took forever. You know, I did um, a few different things here in a few minutes that if I kept going, you know, few sessions, um, I, I have this, this whole thing uh, finished. Something else that I wanted to point out is this little section here that I did previously. This is one of those pink blossoms that's right here on this branch, sharply focused, but this one is in the background, much blurrier. And if you're, if you put in, so I put in a section of pink, right, use a combination of red, I think I put some brown in there, but the transitions from one area like this to another is simply, you know, it's that same process. So I have this kind of green, but one thing I'm noticing is another way I can really help that transition is by bringing those colors just a little more in overlap. So I'm putting that green back on top of the red pulling it into the area next to it. And I'm gonna go back with this with this brown. Kind of neutralize the brightness of that green a little bit. And use a little bit of that deeper green. Which I forgot to do the first time. So 
with your blurrier backgrounds, you're going to have places that kind of shift back and forth in terms of value. Sometimes for the sake of your drawing, you may make a decision about what things you want to be darker. There's probably some advantage for me in this drawing to actually come up against the bird a little more. For example, maybe right here on the underside where this really bright orange meets the background. Maybe I'm going to put in just a little bit darker value to pop that out a little more. So I'm going to use a little more of my green to contrast with that, but then fade it out. Let's go back there with some brown to kind of make it a little more natural, slightly darker. And then since I made things a little more gray, which is very much the case with the rest of my images. I'm going to go back with a little black on that too. All right. So the importance with a colored pencil, leaving the white of the paper unfilled in so that you can really take advantage of the brightness of that, right? White colored pencil doesn't do a whole lot. And then building up gradually in terms of layers, even something like this really intense blue and orange of the bird, I started with some lighter layers and then built upward from that. Get those colors as, as really intense and saturated as you see them, because colored pencil has the ability, it has the pigmentation to really be, you know, nice and bright and intense. I think my camera is not seeing quite as much as the intensity, it may have, maybe it's the light that's washing it out a little bit, but the colors to me, to my eye, look a little brighter on here than they do on the screen. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to get nice, nice and bright and nice and nice and saturated. So, hopefully that is uh, kind of helpful to see.